Hello, I'm Nigel. I'm one of the leaders from Living Springs Community Church, and I'm sharing the word with you this morning. You'll notice I'll lean forward from time to time just to switch the page across on my app icon. Okay, so how are you managing? How are you doing during COVID-19 with all its restrictions and challenges, the impact it's having on our lives in so many ways? It's tough, isn't it? COVID-19 has meant that a metaphorical pause button has been pressed on much of what we would ordinarily do. The everyday things that we enjoy in our lives that perhaps we appreciate a little bit more now. And we'll do once we get back to normality. But not only the things we do in our everyday lives, but our everyday church life. You know, the, the environment we're living in doesn't allow for all the things we'd like to be doing as individuals, nor for all of the things we'd like to be doing as a church. The doors of the building may be closed. The physical activities, meetings, cancelled. From an external perspective, it looks like we should have chopped. Worse still, we might have a for sale or sold sign outside the door. Certainly a Girton Road. It looks like we've died a death. Rather like parts of my garden. Jan would definitely think they've died a death. She'd have turfed out some of the pot plants and some dug up some of the garden because they've gone. But actually, they haven't. We just can't see them. There's a big difference, isn't there, between dead and dormant. This, I believe, is a time for renewal. This is a time for renewal. Renewal. What is that? So, I looked it up in the dictionary and the Cambridge had quite a few definitions. Here's a couple that I particularly liked and fit the purpose of this word perfectly. It says this, the act or process of making changes to something in order to improve it so that it becomes more successful. And then a situation in which something begins again after having stopped for a period of time. You can see where I'm coming from with it. Those plants in my garden are far from dead. They recognize that the current conditions require a particular course of action. They're dormant. And they're dormant in order for them to bloom again more profusely, more abundantly at the right time. The Smart Garden Guide, this is online, says this. Plants will break down and remake proteins to get them ready for the burst of growth they experience in the spring. Outdoor plants and trees will conserve energy to nourish the roots of the plant. I like that. This is a time when we need to nourish the roots of our faith. It's not a time to allow your spiritual life to die, but to recognize the season, the limitations, but also the opportunities. To source spiritual nourishment and be ready to flourish when the time comes. Jesus said in John 12, 24, most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Think about that. Going back to the gardening analogy, 
online the spruce says this when speaking of perennials while the outer leaves and foliage may die back life still lurks in the roots and core of the perennial plant i like that phrase still life still lurks i tell you what as christians we're not perennials we're eternals hallelujah life still lurks in the eternal christian despite the circumstances This is a time for renewal, a time for nourishing our spiritual roots in recognition of the season that we are currently in and of that which is yet to come in preparation for that season that is to come. Life still lurks in his church. Pray. Study the word, draw near to God. Fellowship online, of course. Use the different opportunities that are presented and available to us at this time. Ephesians 5 warns us, shouts to us, wake up, sleeper, from the dead, rise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. What a great promise. I'm going to move away from our analogy of the garden for my second part. Let's remind ourselves for, of those definitions for a moment before I move on. The actual process of making changes to something in order to improve it so that it becomes more successful. And a situation in which something begins again after having stopped for a period of time. I was thinking about biblical analogies that relate to renewal, biblical examples that relate to renewal. Maybe Jesus, as he enters in 40 days of prayer and fasting, in preparation for the ministry that is to come. Maybe that's not absolutely renewal, but he was about to enter a period of ministry that was unlike anything that he had experienced before and would be transformational in world terms. Maybe a more, a closer alignment to renewal would be that of Saul and Paul. Saul becoming Paul. I'm not talking about the, the light on the Damascus road, bit, nor even the bit where Ananias, pretty much scared to death, goes and prays for him and the scales fall from his eyes. No, they're not that bit. But the other transformation part that takes place after that initial experience, we read about it in Galatians 1. Verses 15 to 18. Let me read that. But when it pleased God, this is Paul speaking, when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and remained with him 15 days. Then after three years, did you know that? You see that same passion, drive and desire that was a characteristic of Saul had not disappeared when he received Jesus Christ as his saviour, when, when he came into relationship with him, but he had reshaped his behaviour and redirected his spiritual zeal. 
And those years were not a spiritual downtime, but a spiritual devotion, a spiritual renewal, a transformation, which would enable him in his new God-enabled ministry to have a clear and solid foundation for all that was to come. He was renewed. However, the most spectacular example of renewal that I discovered is that in the book of two chronicles. This is terrific stuff. There's a king by the name of Ahaz. So he reigns over God's people for 16 years. Let's read a little bit about the nature of his reign. This is from 2 Chronicles chapter 28, looking at verses 24 and 25. Ahaz gathered together the furnishings from the temple of God and cut them in pieces. He shut the doors of the Lord's temple and set up altars at every street corner in Jerusalem. In every town in Judah, he built high places to burn sacrifices to other gods and aroused the anger of the Lord, the God of his ancestors. That's just a flavor of the unparalleled unparalleled wickedness and turning from God that Ahaz put in motion during his 16 year reign. That's a long time. Behaviors become embedded, attitudes solidified, practices established, 16 years. Then, 16 years on, his son, Hezekiah, becomes king. He's 25 at the time. Incredibly, incredibly, after such a prolonged period, following the death of his father and him being appointed as king, Hezekiah brings about a spiritual transformation that reshapes the life of God's people. And he wasn't slow about it. This 25-year-old, 16 years of, a, of an experience of his father, which was so far from God, it would be difficult for us to imagine. But this is what we read in 2 Chronicles 29, verses 3 to 6. In the first month, note that. In the first month of the first year of his reign, he, that is Hezekiah, opened the doors of the temple of the Lord, hallelujah, and that's not him, by the way, and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and assembled them in the square on the east side and said, listen to me, Levites, consecrate yourselves now and consecrate the temple of the Lord the God of your ancestors. Remove all defilement from the sanctuary. After 16 years of ungodly practices, this is an outstanding example of renewal. A renewal of the physical, spiritual, and daily lives of the people of God. A renewal of relationship with him. It was utterly transformative. It's biblically described in chapters 29 to 31 of 2 Chronicles. I recommend you read it. What an amazing feat. Having lived with that for 16 years to... To not just have remembered, 
but to have had the heart and devotion to restore the people to God. This is the testimony that we read regarding Hezekiah at the end of chapter 21. So verses 20 and 21 of chapter 31. So this is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah, doing what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. In everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple and in obedience to the law, and the commands. He sought his God and worked wholeheartedly. And so he prospered. Amazing. So how does that apply to us? Our lives and our circumstances. Well, you know as well as either social, economic, and spiritual conditions we currently face present a challenge, but also an opportunity, not to sleep, but to nurture a spiritual depth, foundation, and personal awakening that will see not only our personal lives, but his church, our neighbourhoods transformed as we flourish in the season to come. And as we've seen very briefly in that example from Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles, our God is a God of transformative renewal. There is no circumstance beyond his reach. No life so far lost, it cannot be found. It may be that this is your moment to turn to him or return to him. If that's you right now, then I'd like you to pray with me. To step out of those circumstances. To step into God's presence. Let's pray. Father, forgive me for turning away or never having turned to you. Step into my life. Step back into my life. Transform my life. My circumstances. My eternity. Make me your child. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer today, then please let us know, either through Facebook or YouTube, or contacting Adam, the pastor, uh, through the contact numbers that you'll see on the service today. Thanks for listening. Be blessed. And read that two chronicles. It's fantastic. Amen.